It's an honor and a pleasure to have Dean Stucker, one of, one of the valley legends, in my point of view. Who doesn't actually live in the valley. <laughs> doesn't live in, there is precedence to that. The other, other gentleman who doesn't live sends rockets into space. Ah. There's precedence. But uh, it's quite an honor and privilege to introduce Dean. Dean um, Stucker, CEO, founder of Alteryx. And uh, what a phenomenal company has built over the last, um, uh, I mean, we've, most public markets know them from the recent times, but over the last two decades, he's really uh, built an amazing uh, a treasure chest of a company. So A 20-year-old um, overnight success. That, do you want to give the audience a clue as to the song and how, it bro how you bro broke onto the other side? <laughs> well, I, it's... You know, my background and the, the founders of the company, our backgrounds were data. And uh, in order to optimize or maximize the value of data, you've got to have software that makes it easy to use so that it becomes ubiquitous and you've got to turn data into something more meaningful, which means you've got to surround it with uh, some analytic prowess. Uh, and no one had been doing this. And uh, if you invest a dollar and try to do data software and analytics, uh, we found out that you end up being mediocre at all three. And so we started Alteryx with the sole purpose of building an end-to-end -end platform that would be code-free for the citizen data scientists. So we could amplify their skill sets to solve more problems in this, in this world. And it would also be code-friendly so that the quants could um, get to insights faster, uh, we would automate everything, we would do everything to help them find the assets that were relevant to their analytic journey, help them clean it, standardize it, uh, um, organize it to, cle to create that perfect analytic data set and then prosecute the entire spectrum of analytics from basic descriptive analytics that you would find in dashboards uh, to uh, spatial analytics, alter y, x, uh, everything that happens in business turns out happens somewhere. So we, we prosecuted uh, uh, spatial analytics to begin with because it's just a weird science and we figured if you could uh, dominate in the, the spatial analytics world, all the predictive modeling would, would come a, a lot easier. Uh, and so this continuum of, of analytics is, has been evolving over the the last uh, couple of decades, and uh, we're now um, providing lots of open source with R and Python and Jupyter Notebook support, and uh, we're now working uh, with H2O and auto modeling and um, having our drag and drop, click and run environment make driverless AI part of, of the experience for those that uh, choose to use auto modeling. Self-serve is kind of the, has arrived, and. And um, it, it, my, my first introduction to Alteryx, by the way, was at a, a Tableau conference. And, um, and uh, Reed, who's actually, teens, turns, out, turns out to be founder's son, was introducing me the product. And he said, the way to read about Alter YX is actually it's XY, spatial analytics. And, that, and then he walked me through the whole product. I was quite impressed. I didn't really know how closely he was connected to the company. I thought this would be an amazing hire to get, <laughs> but <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so 14 years of bootstrap and then building an amazing company <clears throat> that defies a lot of traditional valley. Um, um, it, it's, I would call it an iconoclastic uh, company. Almost all the founders are completely intact, friendly, uh, thanks for inviting me to some of your customer advisory councils. Um, what's the secret? Well, I think for, for any of the aspiring entrepreneurs in the audience, uh, make sure you follow your passions. Make sure that you don't raise money too fast. Uh, yeah, we went self-funded self for 14 years. It was, it was hard enough to think about losing our money, the founders, it was untenable to, to, to lose uh, investors' money. And so we said, let's, let's not worry about raising money. It's not a, a badge of honor to raise money. It's actually a sign of a weakness. Uh, and so we said, let's just build an amazing platform. 
let's delight customers, get them to uh, in, incredible outcomes, and we have fanatical customers around the world. Uh, and you know, when the hard work was done, it's all, and it's always hard, but in in 2011, when the hardest hardest part of the work was done, we had to get to the expensive part of the work, and that was building out the go to market. And so, while I was against raising money for a long, long time, uh, we eventually uh, raised 163 million dollars in three rounds over four years. Took the company public in uh, March of 2017, and. Um, we're just still in the early stages of our growth. It's been a, a phenomenal journey. Congratulations on that. And I, I, I only see it as still the tip of the iceberg. A lot of uh, Alteryx um, users, and I was fortunate to be in your, thanks for inviting me to your community, are um, coming at it from the analyst side. And AI and machine learning is not yet that simple for the analyst users. How, how do you see um, what needs to be done on our side to make that extra to break on to the other side? Well, we, we see a, a world that's converging. Um, you know, let, let's, uh, I'll take the last great analytics company. Let's, let's use SaaS, one of the largest uh, privately held software companies in the world. Uh, what Dr. Goodnight built was pretty amazing. Um, he illuminated the need for uh, data science to solve some of the hardest problems in, in both public and private sectors. All we've done is we've leveraged that and we've democratized it into the masses. I mean, to, to think that the million and a half PhD trained statisticians are going to solve all the world's problems is somewhat disingenuous. I, I think that. Uh, we actually need an army of citizen data scientists. And we see this convergence where the citizen who's been living in complex VLOOKUPs because they, prior, prior to that, have been waiting for IT to deliver on the, the promise of, of analytics, and the, the PhDs who, you know, turns out don't, don't actually deploy their models very often. You know, Rexer Analytics suggests that only 13% of data scientists say their models always get deployed. So if, if that's the benchmark for success in data science, then I mean, we're all kind of screwed. And uh, we, we've covered off on that too by allowing people to instantly deploy uh, machine learning algorithms, you know, writing a RESTful service around your work and instantly deploying it in, in uh, web and mobile apps or back to Salesforce for next best action models so that you can actually get on to the next problem. You know, training your models and, and monitoring your models to see where the decay uh, begins to happen to know whether or not you have to, to update things. And so we, we see this convergence and you know, collaboration between the trained statisticians who, who know how to write Scala and, and, and Python and R. Um, you need to, to help the citizen scientists who now we make it super easy. A guy like me can uh, drag and drop a bunch of tools onto a canvas against big data, little data, structured, unstructured, in the cloud, on the ground. And I can build k-means models and linear regression models. And I might need to know what an R-squared is or what a, a centroid distance is between clusters. But, and I might know how to decision off of it, but I need some interpretation. So we think that, that uh, assisted modeling to, to actually amplify human intelligence is required before you're actually going to get to artificial intelligence. And so we see the convergence between the trained statisticians and the non-trained statisticians who turns out they know the questions, which is the hardest part in analytics, is knowing what question to ask. And, and so I, when I talk with executives around the world, we have, um, I don't know, 25% of the global 2,000 as customers. Uh, in 70 countries around the world. And when I talk to, to executives, and we talk about data science and machine learning and AI, they kind of freeze because they, they think, well, let, let me go get the scientists. Let me go get those really smart guys down the hall because they're the only ones who really can figure this out. Now, here's a true story. I live in Irvine, California, and my wife and I walk our Australian shepherd on the weekends. And um, this past fall, we were walking through a, you know, it's a charter school, so it's a pretty bright group of, of ambitious kids. But we take the dog to the water fountain, 
and don't tell anybody, uh, but I let my dog drink out of the kid's water fountain. He's, he's a smart dog. But it's right next to the fourth grade classroom door. And uh, this red door is the fourth grade class and it has a syllabus on it. So I, while the dog is drinking, I went over to the door and you know what they're teaching fourth graders? Machine learning with Python. So if you ever, don't, don't ever sell out the human uh, because without the human, artificial intelligence can never come to pass. I mean, we keep pushing out singularity for years and years and years. Why? Because the human actually has lots of cycles left. Lots of cycles. That's a good uh, way to think about it. Uh, <laughs> it's an intelligent dog, by the way. So, um, question uh, around, um, obviously, obviously, expansion. Last time I called, called you, you were in uh, Sao Paulo or Brazil, and, and excitement about Alteryx and AI going in LATAM. We have a few LATAM customers and audience. How's, how, how are the emerging markets doing in this space? Well, I, I think that uh, when you build a, a broad-based horizontal platform, um, you can prove that, that there is no borders around data science. Uh, it doesn't matter where we go, whether it's in you know, Bulgaria or Singapore or Indonesia, uh, it, it's P Peru and Ecuador and, and Brazil. Everyone has this penchant to tame this data that's gotten crazy and all over the place and they're trying to figure out how do we build analytic processes f along the entire continuum from this basic descriptive analytics you would find in dashboards all the way to automated machine learning algorithms that you can instantly deploy. And it's across every segment. Um, you know, for, for our platform, for example, the banks would use it for uh, today, they'll use it for derivatives modeling and they'll do it for equity pricing and, and uh, next best action models. Uh, retailers will use it for supply chain analytics and, and uh, network optimization for uh, store networks. They'll, they'll use it for risk and compliance and ethics and hyper-local merchandising. Um, the, the Green Bay Packers use it for all kinds of things that are happening on the field and in the stadium. Uh, and it's a single platform. And I saw the airline, airports, Dubai airports use case was quite... Dubai airports is kind of running the airport on, on analytics. We see uh, airlines hedging fuel more efficiently because they're predicting how much fuel you need for scheduled and unscheduled flights each day. We're, we're seeing uh, frequent flyer programs drive you know, 60, 70, 80 million dollar balance sheet improvements uh, because they're now able to predict uh, with a high degree of accuracy, uh, people who will or will not claim uh, their airline mileage. Uh, we're running factory floors in Detroit where, you know, when you see NASCAR cars coming into the pit crew, it's usually because there's IoT data being, being leveraged in, in Alteryx to uh, make recommendations on when a driver needs to come in. We're helping uh, oil companies figure out when to shut rigs down uh, because it's pretty expensive to shut a rig down unnaturally. So again, machine learning algorithms to make predictions on what part is about to fail so that we can save the company a ton of money. So it's, it's exciting to see. And, and then when you balance those amazing outcomes with kids learning Python, uh, you know, we have a chance to, to save the world. It's got to be all of us, though. C certainly, my, my daughter has a GitHub account with with Python machine learning, and she started early. So certainly, um, I, I think I think the, the I think the nuance we have is that a lot of the stuff, uh, the, the problems with AI for kids, to be to small segue is they're not good tools for kids to program, and we need to reinvent IDEs. To, in, in, they are really VI plus plus, slightly better than VI and Emacs. I think we need to reinvent how to code to make code even more accessible. Um, but to, to your point, I think um, uh, I didn't want to um, let the good compliments on SAS go un, unpunished. Um, it's an amazing company. I, to, be, to be fair, I used to say I spent some time in the campus of SAS, and it's, they make their own honey even for their employees. 
and several um, really amazing, uh, one of the best plans, and, but also a focus on making um, math a core function of what they do, and then the data prep side, and the, now with their analytics and uh, visualization. But um, it's a lot of great work. If it was difficult to build a company in this era, it must have been much harder in the 1970s to build a company in space. And, and I think that's a, I would say that's a, I, I agree with that uh, notion. But, um, but is that a sense of the art of war? The art of war, Sun Tzu. Well, I, I um, Sri and I share a passion for the art of war. And, you know, I think that, that uh, it's always tough to build a business. I, I think you have to pick and choose which of the Sun Tzu arguments you're going to believe in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think you can build a big moat and a deep moat and protect yourself without, you know, the whole idea is to win a war without going into a fight. And, uh, you know, we've, as a result of just some basic principles that, that we've followed for many years, we've been very capital efficient. I think we've burned to, to get to a roughly four and a half billion dollar market cap. Uh, I think we burned $40 million uh, on our journey there over, over 21 years. Uh, so, and I, th I think that you know, the other great line from Sun Tzu is that strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory and tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So you, you, all you entrepreneurs who are you know, building businesses in this AI ML world, you know, make sure that your strategies and tactics are always aligned because if you don't, uh, it's not going to end well. And investors, especially if you've raised money, because investors will only remember you, not for your good looks, not for your good ideas. They're only going to remember you if you pay them back. And uh, make sure you're aligning your strategies and tactics, and you'll be fine. And not just for the community conferences. Co correct. <laughs> um, I was going to um, take that uh, thread a little further. In terms of what's ahead, when you say you have um, you have data steeped in your background and years of watching the community grow, um, what's what's ahead? What's the next five ten years look like in in the scheme of the expansion that's happening globally? Well, we're in the early, the very early innings of this data science world. I think that uh, to your point early this morning when you spoke, it's about building an ecosystem and being part of a broader ecosystem, you, you can't do this alone. Um, there's you know, thousands of players that are in the space right now, all trying to figure out what niche they're gonna cover, what platform they're gonna try to skate to, and I don't think anybody really knows. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thankful that Gartner positioned us as the uh, top performer in terms of execution on the uh, data science and machine learning platforms, MQ. Uh, but we're not going to rest on those laurels because th things, things happen quickly. And uh, what's the old adage here in the Valley that slow growth is slow death? So, you know, we're focused on how do you continue to scale? How do you continue to, to build a, a, a company that's, that's uh, founded on a platform play? And um, a lot of it has to do with you know, how we see this convergence between the citizen data scientist who just, you know, wants to love their job again and get out of Excel uh, for, for the heavy lifting and the, the PhD who's equally frustrated because, you know, they're, they're drowning in, in writing code and, and then seeing their models never get deployed. And I think that, you know, over the next uh, three or four years, we're going to see where this might end up. But... The addressable market continues to get bigger. You know, in 2011, when we raised our first Series A, um, you know, we were talking about a six or eight billion dollar TAM, and today I think the TAM is, you know, Brilliant. when we went public, it was a, a 30 billion dollar TAM, and it's probably bigger than that from from everything we can garner around the world. One of uh, kind of ask one of the last questions. Possibly, unless you have more questions yourself, would be around um, your commencement address. Um, one of the 
um, universities where one of the things I usually end my emails is with this will be fun and you talk about how emotional energy is needed to continue the journey and the whole trough of illusionment and disillusionment and then eventually uh, how the entrepreneur's journey probably would be quite useful for the community to hear that comments. Well, whether you're building a, a business or a family or a relationship or a career, I mean, it's all an emotional journey to, to building anything great. And, you know, if you just started your journey as an entrepreneur, you, you're probably thinking this is the best idea anyone has ever had. Trust me, that's going to end very soon. Uh, you're going to say, huh, a few months down the road, you'll be burning some of your own cash and you'll say, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. And then in a few more months, you're going to say, this totally sucks. What did I quit my job for? Uh, but, but, but I think if you, you know, stick to your passion, your, your higher power, your, your family, and surround yourself with friends who can support you, you'll, you'll be okay. The other thing I think that's really important uh, is that um, you got to think about, it was, it was Buckminster Fuller who, who uh, I, I use his line quite a bit. He said that we're building all the right technologies for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and we're never going to be able to take care of Spaceship Earth very well nor for very long if we don't see it as a common cause. It has to be all of us or none of us. And if you have that mentality about not just you know, making some money on your own or, or driving a business that, that's making money, but giving back to the world, we can, we can solve a lot of problems. It doesn't all have to be you know, profit laden. And uh, I think if you have that sort of balance, you're going to be just fine as an entrepreneur. Patience. Patience. It's a long game, it's, it's what I'm learning. Yep. Shree, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank Thanks you. For, it's a pleasure <laughs> and an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Altrix and H2O are building a partnership as well. We're available on the on public. Um, yeah, there was an announcement this morning, and uh, yeah. looking forward to yeah. seeing where this takes us. Thank you. All right, Sri. Thank you. Yeah.